Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to talk to you about my first 14 months of owning this, the Terra Nova Southern Cross One Tent. I'm going to talk about some good points, some bad points, I'll make some general comments about the tent. I'll also go on to say a little bit about the brand new version of this tent for 2023, including some of the pricing strategies, and I'll then go on to give my conclusions at the end of the video. I bought this tent in February 2022 from Cotswold Outdoor for £357. That might seem like a bit of a shock at the moment because right now these are retailing at £700 on the Terra Nova website, but in February last year this was £420 on Cotswold Outdoor. I was then able to apply a National Trust 15% discount and that brought this down to just under £360. I've taken this tent out on 14 camps so far and I've experienced every type of weather condition going in the UK I think. I've taken it out in lovely warm sunshine in Dartmoor. I've taken it out in some really heavy rain and damp conditions in Dartmoor as well. It's been up to 900 metres or 2,900 feet in Snowdonia. And I've also taken it out in snow and ice down to minus 12 degrees Celsius in the Black Mountains. So having used this in all of those different weather conditions, I really hope I can try and share with you an accurate picture of what it's like to use this tent and to take it out on wild camping adventures. So let's start off with the positives. As you can see, this packs down really small. This is an Exped medium dry bag, which is eight litres. And with a little bit of compression, this is the size that the tent comes out at. And that includes the footprint as well. So without the footprint, you would take a little bit of height off this. I must say that Terra Nova don't recommend compressing your tent, but I find that if you're careful, there's no issue with that. This pack size doesn't include the poles. So here are the poles. They are nice and light, there are just two of them there, and I'll show you how it all goes together soon. This tent is made of really good quality materials, and Terra Nova backed that up with a lifetime warranty that lasts the lifetime of the tent. And with that, you also get a two-year replacement warranty on the poles. Even in the event of an accidental breakage, Terra Nova will replace those poles for you within the first two years. With this really small pack size comes a very small weight. So remember this is a four season tent, but it only weighs in at 1.69 kilograms. The updated version is very slightly heavier and I'll touch on that later. So without any further ado, let's get this pitched. And that brings me on to my next really positive point. I've timed myself pitching this tent before and without trying too hard to make a quick pitch, it took five minutes, 45 seconds, including pegging out the guy lines. Being able to pitch a tent quickly is really useful when the weather's bad because it means you can just get the tent up, get in there and get your gear all dry or get out of the wind and cold. You can pitch this tent with the inner and outer together which is an absolutely non-negotiable must-have for me with UK wild camping. I don't want to have to put the inner tent up first, let it get rained on and then hurriedly drag the outer over the top of the inner tent. So pitching both in one go is a real benefit. So not only does this tent pitch really quickly, I find it always pitches really well. You can see that all the panels are nice and taut. And although the ground is really uneven here, I find that the tent always looks good. The panels are always tight and that really helps in the wind. And that brings me on to another really positive point about this tent, and that is the way it handles the wind. So because its sides are quite wide for the size of the tent and they're quite sloped towards the top, as are the ends, with the roof line not being too high without it not being too cramped on the inside, this tent just sheds the wind really well. I find it tends to cut through the wind if you pitch the narrow end head on into the wind as you normally would want to. It just cuts through the wind and it's actually really quiet. So the shape of the tent combined with the fact that it pitches nice and taut like this, it means it doesn't flap around and make a lot of noise like some other tents do, including my Hilleberg Solo. This is a freestanding tent, so without it being pegged to the ground, you can lift the whole tent up. And that's actually really useful, I found, particularly in the snow. If you're trying to find a flat pitch to put it down on, you can get the poles in, get the shape of the tent established, and then you can move it around and peg it down wherever you fancy dropping it for the night. And before we start taking a closer look at the tent, I am just going to list the way it looks as one of my positive points. I think it's a really good looking tent. That's not important, but if you're going to spend hundreds of pounds on something, you might as well like the way it looks in your photos and as you walk back to the camp to go to bed at night. My next positive point about this tent is its size. This is a strict one person, four season tent, and I think Terra Nova have nailed the sizing of it. So for someone of my size, I'm five foot nine, which is this many centimeters. I find the length and the width of it perfect for getting my Thermarest Neo Air X Therm Max Regular wide inside there without it being too cramped. 
I've got space beyond my head to store any electricals. I've got space next to me to store my spare clothes and any equipment. And then in the vestibule, I can store my rucksack tucked all the way down to one end out of the way. And I can have my shoes, my food, my cooking kit also down to the other end, but that leaves me a nice clear way in and out of the outer door. I find the height to be just about right. I think if it was a couple of centimetres lower, I would find it a little bit restrictive. But as it stands, I can sit in there, I can eat my food sitting up. If it was much higher, then it would start catching the wind and it wouldn't be so good in the wind as I described earlier. So for me, this is quite close to the Holy Grail. If I had to have one tent all year round, it would probably be this tent because it's just so good at everything it does. A quick word about the poles. These are 8.64 millimetre poles, so they are quite thin, but that means they're really lightweight and you will see them deflect when the wind picks up and really starts hitting the tent, but they can take that abuse and they haven't permanently bent out of shape or anything. So once again, I think Terra Nova have probably hit the nail on the head, getting that compromise between weight and strength. Something else I'll point out, you'll notice at the peg out strap at the bottom of each pole, there are two eyelets down here and you can choose which one you put the pole in. If you put the pole in the outer eyelet, you'll have a slightly looser pitch. If you put the pole on the inner eyelet, you'll have a slightly tauter pitch. And that might mean that the tent moves around a little bit less in the wind. And of course, if you pitch in the outer hole, then you'll just stress all the seams a little bit less. It's a personal preference thing. I almost exclusively use the outer holes now. But sometimes if it's really windy, I might just drop the blue pole into the inner eyelet on one of the straps out of the two. Another positive point is having two zips on the outer door. Not all tents come with this cheap and simple feature, but I find it invaluable. It's really useful being able to just zip down from the top and check the weather before you open the door fully. And it also means that you can use this top portion of the door for additional ventilation. And that brings me on to my next positive point, which is ventilation. When I started researching the Southern Cross one before buying it, I'd heard that the ventilation wasn't very good and that condensation was a real issue in this tent. But actually with these two vents, one up at the head end and one at the foot end, which correspond with the outer vents in the fly sheet, I actually don't find ventilation to be an issue with this tent. What you can also do is lower the top zip on the outer door and also raise the lower zip until you can connect the two little buckles that Terra Nova provide you with that allow you to lock up the bottom half of the lower door without it coming too loose and flappy in the wind. Setting the tent up in this way, I've found that the Southern Cross one actually copes really well with condensation and I'd say this is probably better than my Hilleberg Solo in similar conditions. It's a four season tent where the fly sheet comes right down to the ground so naturally the flow of air is going to be restricted compared to a three season tent but I find this works really well for me. And while we're talking about the door, Terra Nova have also added a little loop at the bottom of the door here so you can attach it to a trekking pole and form a canopy with the outer door. Looking towards the inner tent now, one of my positives is the bathtub design on this tent. So you can see this black lower portion here is where the ground sheet runs along and then turns up to meet the upper section of the inner tent here. Now this ground sheet is hydrostatic rated to 10,000 millimetres and this bathtub here has saved me in the past from water that's maybe two or three centimetres deep as it pooled in the vestibule here on Dartmoor. I was watching that water level very closely and I'm very pleased to say that it didn't come over the bathtub here so this really saved me that night. And my last positive point is going to be about the convenience items on the inside of the tent. So we've got these little hanging loops in here and I tend to hang my Flextail Tiny Pump 2X from one of these loops. So you disconnect the little ring, clip it back into the pump body and then that can serve as your lantern to light up the inside of your tent. This will also pump up your inflatable sleep mat and it'll work as a vacuum to empty all the air out of it when you come to roll it up. If you'd like one of these, click the link in my description. That will also give you a 15% discount off any Flextail items you order. Tying in with the convenience of those hanging loops, you also get these two pockets on the inside of the tent which are quite big. So you can chuck your phone in there, chuck your pump in there, maybe keys, anything you want out of the way. Another positive point I'll make is the connection points between the inner and the outer tent. I have never touched these, I always leave the inner connected to the outer, but if you wanted to take these two apart, maybe for drying, or maybe you wanted to sleep using the outer alone and ditch the inner just for a sort of semi-cowboy camping style, you can just pop these toggles through the loops and then drop the inner away from the outer and the whole lot's disconnected. So on to some of the negatives of the tent, and while I'm inside I'll start in here. 
I am only five foot nine, which is this many centimeters. And like I say, the inside is just high enough for me. I can sit here, I can eat my food. I don't feel like I'm too hunched over. Of course, I am in a tent, so it's not going to be so roomy. I can stand up and walk around in here. So you do have to expect that it's not going to be the most spacious place you've ever had a meal. But if I'm feeling short of space, I can always lean forward a bit and put my head up in this little space between the inner tent and the outer tent, and there's a lot more room there. Moving on to another negative that involves the inner tent, I'll talk about the tensioning of the inner. So when I first bought this tent last year, I did a, a very low quality video review, my uh, initial impressions in my living room filmed on my phone, and I talked about how saggy the inner tent is. Now I found later on that that was really down to me not tensioning the inner properly. So there are five points. There's one right here, and then there are four in the four end corners of the tent. That's where the inner tent connects to the outer tent using some little short straps and adjuster buckles. And what I didn't know when I first bought the tent is that those five points need adjusting every time you pitch the tent. I see that as a bit of a negative. It's a little bit of a faff and it took me three or four pitches of the tent to get into the habit of tensioning those every time I pitch it. Personally, I think it would have been better to use some elastic straps, maybe connected via toggles. So if you need to, you can replace them in the future if the elastic gives way. But it's really not that big a deal. Once you're used to the tent, you can just reach under either from the outside as you go around pegging things out, or you can reach to these four points while you're in the inner. Uh, and then there's just this one around here that needs adjusting up from the outside. You just reach under the fly sheet, pull the strap tight, and that's the job done. One thing I remember from when I first bought the tent is that I was missing two of the peg out loops. So this tent, including the guy line, should take 13 pegs to pitch, but I could only use 11 because these little lengths of yellow Dyneema attached to the central blue pole peg out loops were missing. All I did was drop Cotswold Outdoor an email because they were the retailer I bought this tent off. They contacted Terra Nova and Terra Nova just sent a couple of lengths of Dyneema straight out to me so I could tie them onto the peg out straps and get the full 13 peg experience. Of course, for the integrity of the tent, it's really important that you can peg down the central blue pole. So I'm glad that was added and hopefully those won't be missing on any future tents. And now onto what's probably been the biggest negative I can share with you about this tent. And that is the failure of the eyelets in some of the peg out straps. On each of the six corners of the tent here, there are some short webbing straps that have two metal eyelets pressed into each one. And I noticed that the eyelets started fretting through the webbing strap. Once again, it was a case of talking to Cotswold Outdoor and Terra Nova, and I said because this tent was ticking all of the other boxes for me, I was really keen to get the straps repaired under my lifetime warranty. So sure enough, I sent it back. A few days later, Terra Nova had replaced all six of the peg-out straps with slightly upgraded items, and I haven't had a problem since. I'm really glad I took that approach rather than just returning this tent for a refund because I did a lot of research to find such a good tent and this has absolutely served its purpose for me and I want to use it for years to come. I've just got a few general comments to make about the tent now before I touch on the 2023 upgraded version and then my conclusions. So the first comment I'll make is that I bought myself a footprint for this tent. It's the genuine article, it's the Terra Nova Southern Cross 1 footprint. This costs £60. I have already released a video about this footprint, so I'll leave a link to that video in the description. But footprints are really good for giving you a nice clean, dry area to work in here. You can kneel on it, you can cook on it. And if you've got snow on the ground, it means that you don't have to worry about it melting and getting everything wet. So personally, I would recommend one of these. It also really protects the underside of your tent. It doesn't add a lot of weight. And I've also released a video on how I connected this footprint to the peg out straps using some very cheap little plastic toggles. I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well, or you can find it in my catalogue of videos. I'll now give you a quick rundown of the updates Terra Nova have made to this tent for the 2023 season. And I'll start with the biggest improvement, and that's the addition of a hood up at the top of the door here. So as I mentioned earlier, you can really improve your ventilation by unzipping the top section of the door. But if you've got wind and rain, blowing in this direction it could blow all that weather straight into the top of the door and that means you have to shut the door and you therefore compromise your ventilation a bit. So by adding that little hood up here Terra Nova will prevent that rain from driving in and soaking the inner tent. The two other major upgrades also relate to the door so there's going to be an additional tie back point just up here which will be a, a sort of loop and toggle system I believe and that just gives another option for securing this door back. Not everyone likes this clipping system. I think it's really light and simple and easy to use, but it's a personal preference thing. 
Terra Nova have also added an additional peg out loop on the bottom edge of the outer door here. So when the door is zipped shut, you'll be able to peg this down. So I presume that's going to be of most use when you're out away from the tent and you're leaving it all closed up. Maybe you can access it from the inside of the tent, I'm not really sure. The door is quite a big panel, so it does blow in a bit with the wind, but that's to be expected really, and it hasn't been a major issue for me. And I think the last update to mention is that the inner tent will now be made of a PFC free material, which is more environmentally friendly. So with those updates I've just mentioned there, the 2023 tent will be very slightly heavier than mine. Mine had a claimed weight of 1.69 kilos versus 1.75 for the 2023 version. But it's not the weight that's really got people talking about the new version of this tent, it's the price. I paid £357 for mine, albeit with a discount code, but the 2023 version is available on Terra Nova's website for £700, and that's making a lot of people just say, that's too much, how can you justify it? Do I need to look at other tents? So what I'd like to do is talk about two different methods that you could use to get this tent at a much better price. The first one is the most effective and that's using Terra Nova's 30% discount which is based on a trade-in. So you can take along your old tent and you can give it to Terra Nova and they'll give you a 30% discount off the retail price of a brand new tent. So this goes down from £700 to £490 which is an absolutely massive saving. The second method I can offer you is my very own discount code. So I am a Terra Nova affiliate now and I've used this tent for over a year myself and I bought it with my own money. But I can offer you a 20% discount code. So all you have to do is enter the code OUTDOORS20 at checkout when you're buying a new tent from Terra Nova and you'll get 20% off the price of that tent. So instead of the £700 sticker price, you would be paying £560. And I think that's a really good saving. If you do want to buy a new Terra Nova tent, whether it's a Southern Cross one like mine or any other model, please use the affiliate link in my video description. That'll take you through to Terra Nova's website. And then you can either use my discount code for 20% off or maybe think about trading in an old tent for 30% off. If you're still not sure that those prices represent good value, I think I'd start comparing this to its rivals. So I think in this market, this is a competitor for the Fjallraven Abisko Light 1 and probably the MSR Access 1 as well. Now, both of those tents retail at about 550 to 600 pounds and they weigh between 1.6 and 1.65 kilos. So they're very slightly lighter, but the price is definitely up there. For me, I think the Abisko Light looks less solid than this tent. It looks like a really strong tent and I've seen campers like Bushman and Blue push the Abisko Light to its limits and beyond in really high winds. But it just seems quite wafty. It, it waves around in the wind quite a bit, whereas this stands really quite strong. And the MSR Access 1 is a very small tent in comparison. It's really narrow. It's got really steep sides, so I don't think I'd really trust it too much in high winds. And also its fly sheet doesn't come down to the ground, so there's quite a big gap between the fly sheet and the ground. I think the wind could really whip under there and blow that tent around a bit. So comparing those three tents to each other, this still comes out on top for me, but that's a personal preference thing. If you then go the other way, you could look at a tent like my Hilleberg Solo. That's 900 pounds now, and it weighs 2.4 kilograms or 2.7 kilograms with its footprint. It is a very strong tent. It's meant for really extreme conditions, and I don't really think the two tents naturally sit next to each other in the market. But I often find myself trying to choose between my Solo and my Southern Cross 1. And the Southern Cross wins 8 times out of 10 because it's just so light. And I'd rather save 700 grams on my pack weight without really sacrificing so much strength that I have to worry about how safe I'm going to be in the night. So I've thrown a few different tents out there for you to have a look at maybe if you're considering a Southern Cross 1. Maybe you want to compare those tents and see which one fits the bill better for you. It all comes down to personal preference. I honestly don't mind if you buy one or the other. It makes no difference to me. I'd just like to share my experience with you and hopefully give you some of the stronger selling points of this tent that mean that I will be using this for years to come. So that sums up my first 14 months with this tent. I hope you found it useful. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any questions for me, please feel free to use the comments section. I will reply to you all. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider subscribing. And if you'd like to buy one of these tents, I'd really appreciate it if you used my affiliate link and discount code if they work for you, because I earn a small commission off those tents. And I really want to keep putting money back into this channel for things like GoPros. So I've been wanting a second GoPro for quite a lot of months now, but they cost a lot of money. And every little bit of commission I earn can go into that pot to improve my filming equipment to bring you better videos going forward. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.